Ukraine's Trizub laser is swatting Russian drones from two miles away. Ukraine may have just cured my skepticism about battlefield lasers. For nearly two decades, we've heard promises of lasers transforming warfare. And yet here we are in 2025, still waiting for that Star Wars moment. Now, Ukraine and the UK are working hard to give us our sci-fi future by approaching laser warfare with similar timelines and philosophies. On the front lines of Ukraine's gritty conflict, the Trizub laser system is reportedly operational, while the UK's Dragonfire, laden with potential, is still going through extensive testing. Hey friends, Wes here, and my nerd cred is uncontested. I promise I'm one of the few YouTubers you watch who actually has a Star Wars tattoo. The force is strong with this story, so let's talk about Ukraine's Trizub laser. I see you have constructed a new lightsaber. Ukraine's battlefield just got a dose of directed energy reality. As they're now famous for, Ukraine has skipped the tactical hype and gone straight to battlefield utility. According to Colonel Vadim Sukarevsky of Ukraine's Unmanned System Forces, the Trizub laser weapon is already zapping low-flying drones and aircraft at distances of over two kilometers. Named after the trident symbol of Ukrainian independence, the Trizub system claims to neutralize Russian UAVs with pinpoint precision. This technological leap is impressive, not least because Ukraine has been resourcefully innovating under immense pressure. From adapting consumer-grade drones for reconnaissance to integrating Western-supplied missiles into Frankensams, Ukraine has become a global case study in battlefield ingenuity. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. When this war is over, Ukrainian soldiers will be teaching classes at West Point. The Trizub adds to this story joining the exclusive club of operational laser weapons alongside systems from the US, China, and Israel. Russian UAVs like the Shahid-136 have plagued Ukraine with low-cost, high-volume swarm tactics that overwhelm traditional air defenses. The Trizub promises to neutralize these pests at a fraction of the cost of traditional missile systems. Instead of spending millions on interceptor missiles, $4 million for a single Patriot, for instance, Ukraine can deploy a laser beam to disable drones for pennies per shot, a budget-conscious solution in a war of attrition. The physics behind the Trisub are both simple and brilliant. Directed energy weapons concentrate beams of light to heat and destroy specific components of a target. Against drones, this might mean melting circuits, burning through lightweight fuselages, or igniting battery fuel sources. Such precision minimizes collateral damage, a crucial factor in Ukraine's densely populated combat zones. Despite its promise, experts like Fabian Hoffman of the Oslo Nuclear Project have flagged significant challenges for the Trizub. Atmospheric interference and thermal blooming can weaken a laser's power over distance, while weather conditions such as rain or dust storms scatter the beam's energy. But against predictable, slow-moving drones, these hurdles seem surmountable, at least in theory. Logistics could also make or break the Trizub. Its real-world effectiveness depends not just on its laser, but its mobility, energy demands, and ease of deployment. A stationary system might struggle to adapt to Ukraine's dynamic battlefield, while reliance on external power grids could limit its operational range. How Ukraine integrates this system into its broader air defense strategy will determine whether the Trizub becomes genuinely useful or a novelty. On this note, I just wrote an article for my readers at Substack that explores current US plans to beam down power from space to combat zones. Once this becomes a reality, battlefield lasers suddenly become much more feasible. Enter the UK's Dragonfire, a laser that even Emperor Palpatine would approve of. Good. Meanwhile, across the English Channel, the UK is hard at work on its own directed energy marvel, the Dragonfire Laser. Announced in 2017 and developed by the Dragonfire Consortium, this weapon, slated for deployment in 2027, claims clinical precision capable of hitting targets as small as a coin from a few kilometers away. God save the king, my good man. On paper, Dragonfire looks like a dream. Each shot costs an estimated 
$13, a big contrast to the millions spent on missiles. Unlike conventional weapons, Dragonfire's operational capacity is limited only by its power supply. No resupply convoys are needed. But therein lies the rub. It's still under development, a decade behind Ukraine's scrappy Trizub. Although there are some reports that the Dragonfire is undergoing testing right now in Ukraine. Dragonfire's beam combining technology, where multiple lasers merge into a single cohesive beam, is undeniably impressive, sort of like the Death Star. This precision weapon can target specific components of a drone or a missile, disabling it without causing collateral damage. Its advanced optics stabilize the laser in challenging conditions, ensuring it can stay locked onto its target despite vibrations, turbulence, or movement. But the system's relatively low power output 50 kilowatts compared to the 150 kilowatt US Navy's Helio system limits its ability to neutralize more robust targets like advanced drones or artillery shells. Just like with the Trizub, atmospheric scattering and thermal blooming also persist as engineering challenges, reducing Dragonfire's range and effectiveness in real world combat conditions. Originally projected for deployment in the 2030s, Dragonfire's timeline was accelerated to 2027, which is still light years away by wartime standards. Pandemic disruptions and technical setbacks have hampered progress, leaving the system confined to controlled trials. While these tests have demonstrated its capabilities, they're a far cry from battlefield conditions. The comparison between Trizub and Dragonfire isn't just about technology, it's about immediacy versus potential. Ukraine's Trizub is a pragmatic, cost-effective response to an urgent threat, while Dragonfire represents a long-term investment in cutting-edge warfare. Each offers lessons in the evolving dynamics of modern military strategy. Both systems boast an extraordinarily low cost per shot. Trizub and Dragonfire disrupt traditional economics by delivering cheap, precise countermeasures to inexpensive threats like drones. This point is crucial and was the premise behind my video on the Gravehawk, also from the UK. We need cheaper air defense solutions to counter cheap munitions, full stop. But Ukraine's ability to deploy the Trizub immediately provides an edge in a war where every resource counts. The Trizub's rapid fielding highlights the advantages of repurposing existing technologies. Built from commercially available components, it sidesteps years of R&D to deliver an operational solution. Dragonfire, while technologically superior, remains unproven in real combat scenarios. Its developmental timeline leaves it unable to address immediate battlefield needs. Also, let's pause and appreciate Ukraine's ability to build something and then throw that into battle with minimal testing, as if to say, we'll test it on the Russians. Neither system is without flaws. Lasers are inherently limited against high-speed, heat-resistant threats such as ballistic missiles. Dragonfire's lower power output further restricts its target range. The Trizub faces similar constraints compounded by the operational challenges of a wartime environment. Both systems excel in niche roles but fall short of becoming a comprehensive air defense solution. But that's not really the point, is it? A solid air defense strategy incorporates many different systems whose strengths can fill gaps and the weaknesses of others. Once they actually show up in mass, directed energy weapons like the Trizub and the Dragonfire will mark a turning point in air defense, offering a glimpse into the future where photons replace explosives. But their success hinges on overcoming technical and logistical hurdles, from power generation to atmospheric interference. For Ukraine, the Trizub is more than another weapon. These types of announcements have become commonplace in the West, but for Ukraine to have fielded a homegrown laser under battlefield conditions makes a dramatic statement of resilience and innovation. For the UK, Dragonfire represents the promise of precision warfare eventually. Still, lasers on the battlefield appeal to the Hollywood sci-fi nerd in all of us. We find it irresistible and we want to know more, which is likely why you clicked on this video or you just enjoy the smut that I peddle. For now, Trizub is shaping the battlefield in real time while Dragonfire's promise 
remains on the horizon. Both systems remind us that in the race to innovate, timing can be just as critical as technology. And as Russia continues its drone-heavy assault, the big takeaway is this. When it comes to lasers, Ukraine isn't waiting for Hollywood. It's rewriting the script in real time. That's it, friends. Subscribe if you're a fan of the original trilogy. And as always, stay frosty. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.